the state is necessary to protect us from crime, as well as from other states that pose threats. But what would happen if the threats disappeared? What if people no longer want to engage in crime and all other states disarm? Would the state be needed in such a case? And is it as eager to finally defeat crime and achieve world peace as it says it is? If you like our videos about history, please like them and share them with your friends. It all starts with the Vikings. Most of the states in Europe came about because of them. In the beginning, they just sailed and plundered the people who lived there, but later they figured out that it was possible not to sail away. It was more convenient. They could rob right on the spot. Both the robbers and their victims knew from experience how much would be plundered. The victims could even be a little offended if they were robbed a little more than usual this time. That's how taxes came about. Sometimes the Vikings got upset when they came back and people had already been robbed before them. So came the idea that people should not only be robbed, but also protected from other robbers. And following that, the Vikings began to consider themselves not bandits, but protectors. That's how the state came into being. In fact, the transition from bandit to protector does not require much time. It can happen almost instantaneously. Just think of the United States in the 30s, when both of these types of robbers existed simultaneously. But while simple bandits like Bonnie and Clyde ended their careers quickly and tragically, the bandit defenders like Lucky Luciano were lucky and had a long and successful career. As a child, the future mafioso Luciano, figured out not to rob 10 cents from his classmates, but to offer them protection from other bullies for 5 cents. And the classmates gladly paid, knowing that otherwise the other bullies would take it away anyway. We don't know if little Luciano figured out how to collude with the other bullies to keep threatening the children, thereby keeping up the demand for Luciano's protection. But we do know that the states figured it out at one time. The states exist in mutually beneficial symbiosis with each other, and without the mutual threat, they would be completely unnecessary. Except for the endless fight against crime. So it is an exaggeration to say that states are interested in ending crime or eliminating violence from the planet. But back to the Vikings. The heroic Viking is replaced by an equally heroic medieval knight. He learns to sword and ride a horse from the age of five. He is a professional warrior who alone is worth 20 of the strongest peasants. That is why it never occurred to anyone to draft peasants, that is, common subjects, into the army. Armies consisted of the nobility and professional mercenaries who had to be paid. Everything changed with the invention of the firearm. It leveled the playing field in a night train since childhood was no longer worth 20 peasants. Wars begin to be won by the richest, those who can hire the most mercenaries. But here, too, there is a limit. One by one, the states drive themselves into a financial crisis and finally pay attention to the people. But how do you get all the people to fight? No amount of money is enough here. We have to explain to them that now they are not fighting for a king or a duke, but for their country, that is, in fact, for themselves. At first the idea seemed wild, but over time it caught on. And later it was transformed into a democracy, where the right of the state to send you to your death is exchanged for your right to choose who will do it. And what do you think about the situation in the world? Why don't the war stop? Be sure to write in the comments. Also, support us on Patreon. It's the best way to contribute to our work. The link is in the description.